I was simply amazed when I picked this mower up from some well-to-do people in the rich part of town, but I was shocked by its condition before I cleaned it. This time, I intend on finding out why they wanted to give it away, and hopefully it's nothing serious. But as you can tell from how I started this whole conversation, things take a serious turn, and the reason as to why they gave it away will become very obvious. Now I have to make a really tough choice. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this Troy built branded lawnmower, and the problem is that I don't know if it even works. That means we're going to have to try and get this thing started up and see what happens to it, and maybe we'll be able to save this mower from being used as parts or something a lot worse. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, but yours might be different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Now, in the last video on this mower, we did some light diagnostic work right before we started cleaning it. Now, cleaning a mower is not going to make it any better in terms of getting it to start and run, but you never know if somehow the dirt and grass might be affecting something in the ignition system. Either way, if you didn't see that video, I'm going to show you what it was doing, and when you see it for yourself, you're going to realize something strange is going on here. So as you can see and hear, it's not responding like it should, and also the pull handle is being pulled back by the engine. And from that description, we find the first of many issues this mower seems to have, which is a sheared flywheel key. I do plan on explaining more about it when we get to the flywheel and key, but this might also be the result of the valve lash being out of tolerance as well, but there is one way to tell the difference. First, let's get down to the flywheel. So here's how to tell if the rope being pulled back by the engine is caused by a sheared flywheel key. If the rope pulls normally and easily just like it should when there is no fuel in the tank or if none is put inside the carb. But if you put fuel into the tank or put fuel into the carb and pull on the rope and only then does the handle get pulled back, that means the key is sheared. So why does it do it then and not do it when there's no fuel in the system? Simple, a sheared key will cause the air-fuel mixture to ignite at the wrong time. Technically, the ignition timing has now been advanced and the combustion is happening while the piston is still moving upwards in the cylinder instead of closer to the top. Now, the key is supposed to hold the flywheel to the crankshaft in a certain position, but if the blade should hit something hard like a rock or a stump, it'll stop the blade, but the flywheel wants to keep spinning and cause the key to be sheared. After getting the large nut and washer out of the way, you can now see the keyway in the crank and also the top part of the key. Now they should be lined up, but as you can see, part of the keyway is over to one side instead of being lined up with the keyway. That means the key is definitely sheared and needs to be replaced to bring the timing back to normal. Now you can hit the crankshaft with the nut put back on it while prying on the flywheel if you want to, but since I've got this two-jaw puller, it makes it much easier, and I don't have to worry about breaking something and making this repair even more expensive. Now once off the crankshaft, it's now very obvious what's happened to the key. It is not supposed to look like this. Instead, it should be a rectangular piece of metal. There's just one issue though, and that is I do not normally carry these keys in my bag. However, I need to test this engine to make sure it's not broken before I start spending any real money on it. So in the meantime, I'm going to replace the key with one that I made. However, this key will not shear, so I cannot leave it in there. I'm just going to use it for testing, but once I know the engine is working like it should, I'll replace the key with the correct one. I know it's very tempting to get some key stock from the hardware store to put in there, but if the blade should hit something hard again, instead of the key shearing, the steel key will cause the flywheel to crack. I don't know about you, but I'd rather replace a single key for about $5 instead of replacing a flywheel, which on this machine will cost well over $70, if not more. Now that we've got the first issue fixed, we need to inspect the carb for any issues, and man, do we have a big problem. Now after looking at the fuel jet, which is also the bowl nut, and the fuel bowl, you can see they are not in good condition. And from that information, that means we now need to take off the carb to get a better look at it, because I'm afraid this one is going to be rough. Now, not only was there water in the carb, but there's also a lot of old gummed up gasoline on the jet and of course the bowl as well. Now, you might think that's the worst part of it, but what I'm looking for on the carb is whether or not the needle seat is closed up. And if it has, there's going to be a lot of other issues to deal with as well. The first issue is that if the needle seat has swollen, the opening in the seat will be a lot smaller than it's supposed to be. This opening is the only way fuel makes it into the bowl area, and this restriction will keep the car from being able to meet the demands from the engine, causing it to only run for a few minutes before stopping. 
but that's not the worst of it. Since the seat will be swollen, it'll affect how the float works and cause the carb to leak fuel either all over the mowing deck or even possibly inside the engine and ruining the oil. Now once the carb is off the engine, I'll then turn it upside down so I can see the float sitting in its position when it's stopping fuel from coming into the carb. Now the float is supposed to be parallel with the gasket surface, but it doesn't look that way. So to give you a better visual, I'm going to overlay two images using my screwdriver to show you that these two surfaces are not parallel with each other. That can only mean one thing, and that is the needle seat is indeed swollen and needs to be replaced, and if you've been counting, this is the second major problem we've come across, but it's not the last one either. Now we do need to at least confirm that the seat is swollen, and there's no better way to do that than to remove the float and needle to get a better look at it. So it is a bit difficult to see only because it's sitting at the bottom of this opening, but since I know what a new one looks like, this one in comparison is most definitely closed up by at least 25%. Now we'll have to come back to the seat here in a bit because I just noticed that the choke flap is not moving like it should because the post it's attached to is stuck. Now this typically happens when you have a carb that's been leaking fuel for a long time, so that pretty much confirms that this carb was leaking the last time fuel was put into the system and the carb took most of the abuse. Now to free the flap, all we have to do is spray carb cleaner at the bottom of the post until it frees up, which didn't take that much for this one to do. After freeing the choke flap, I'll then spray all the openings and ports that I can see on the carb, and once I'm satisfied with it, I'll then clean the bowl followed by the fuel jet. Once I think it's clean enough, I'll then put the carb back together and then install it back onto the engine. So here's my reasoning for doing this instead of trying to fix the carb. Even though I know the carb is going to leak fuel and I know it's going to basically run out of fuel to give to the engine, I need to hear the engine start and run to find out if this engine might be broken. Of course the other reason is because I'm all out of replacement needle seats so I have to wait for the new ones to arrive in the mail anyway. But if I can get the engine to start and run even for a few seconds, I can find out if there's rod knock or if the crank is slightly bent, then I'll go through this project knowing what kind of money this is going to cost me. So as of right now, my plans are to install the old and leaking carb to find out the engine is still good. And if it is, I'll then order a package of new needle seats, bowl gaskets, and I'm also going to order a new carb just in case something goes wrong with this one I'm trying to save. So if I'm trying to save the old carb, why bother ordering a new one? Aren't I just wasting time and money? Now the answer is it's quite possible that I'm wasting my money, but since I do this kind of hobby quite a bit, more than likely that carb will not go to waste. So having it on hand and ready just in case this one doesn't work out just makes sense to me, at least at the moment. I'm sure if I look back at this in a few years, I might think differently. But what if you want a different perspective on this project? Well, how about this then? If you have a limited amount of time to work on these machines, then I'd recommend just replacing the carb and moving on. What that means for you is you don't have to worry about a swollen needle seat, cracked bowl gaskets, clogged jets, or maybe even a stuck choke flap. All you have to do is make contact with the seller online, tell them you want a carb for your mower, and then they'll ask you one or two questions about your mower, and then they'll help you complete your order. It's really that simple, and your chances of a successful repair will increase from something really low to almost 99%. I mean, who wouldn't want those odds? Of course, there are those who like a real challenge, like ice skating uphill, answering a bunch of questions while eating spicy food. For them, let them waste their time trying to save $10 by spending an hour or two working on trying to save a really bad carb. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that idea. Heck, I'm planning on wasting my time on this carb when the parts come in in a couple days. All I'm saying is do yourself a favor and make the repair as easy as possible. Now, after only adding about six ounces of fuel in the tank, I think it's time to try and start it. So it almost started, but for some reason, I'm seeing water on this side of the mower. Oh, there's also some chocolate milk on the mowing deck as well. I wonder where that came from. If you already know the answer to that one, don't spoil it for everyone else. Now, I have to wonder if there's an issue with the spark plug. Maybe it's wet with water, or maybe it's covered in oil. Well, it is a bit wet with fuel, so more than likely the engine is flooded with fuel since the carb is leaking. So while the plug is out of the engine, I'm going to pull on the rope a few times to try and get out some of the extra fuel. Then I'm going to install the plug and look at the carb to see how bad the leak is. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of gasoline dripping out of the carb and onto the mowing deck. And with this much fuel in the intake of the carb, there's almost no way the engine was going to start, at least not without using a drill to start it. Thank you. 
it almost started this time, so maybe a couple more pulls. Well, the good news is that it started and the self propel seems to be working, but there seems to be some noise coming from the top of the engine. I'm guessing there's an issue with the recoil or the starter pulse. Either way, it's not too big of a problem to fix. That is until it got closer and I saw this. Now, I'm not talking about the smoke coming from the muffler. I'm just guessing there's some water and oil in it, but it's what's under the muffler that's truly disturbing. So what you're seeing is oil that's been contaminated with water, and when an engine like this one is running, it just churns the water and oil to make it look like a chocolate milkshake. Now, I'm not sure how the water got into the engine in the first place, but if there's an opening in it and you spray water on it like I did to clean it, some of it's probably going to get inside the engine. At least I know the engine starts and runs and it sounds okay, but I have to wonder just how bad the leak is and if I can fix it. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to remove the carb from the engine. That way I can be ready when the new parts finally come. But if I find a large crack in the block, this project might be put on hold indefinitely. However, I am hopeful that it's just a gasket issue, but if it is, it'll be the worst one I've ever seen, and I've seen some really bad ones. Now, I don't want to sound like a kid's program, but I do want to count how many different issues I've found on this project. The first issue was a sheared flywheel key. The second one, we're just going to group into one, and that's a carb that needs a lot of help. The next one, even though it's a minor one, is a possible recoil issue, and the last one is an engine that's apparently leaking a lot of oil somewhere underneath the block. That's a grand total of four issues, most being major and one minor, but I think this mower might win the award for rightfully being given away. I don't think I've ever seen this many issues on one mower before. So now I have to decide if I'm going to even bother trying to fix this mower, and that's because the time I spend on this mower along with the parts might just mean I'm going to lose money on it. I know I do this as a hobby, but I can't lose money on every project, otherwise I'll be doing this hobby on the streets. So my question is, what should I do? Should I continue with this project, hopefully fixing the carb, the recoil, and finding the leak in the block? Or should I just set this one aside and wait for another mower to come around that has a good engine, but with a bad mowing deck? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.